Welcome to KNX Tutorial 3 Programming uh, Underfloor Heating using KNX So in this uh, tutorial I'm gonna cover uh, a basic example just uh, one example which will cover the concept of underfloor heating and I'm gonna use uh, I'm gonna show you what device to use and how to plan the underfloor heating uh, how to create logic for the heating um, I will, I'm not gonna uh, add any artist um, any display keypad which where you're gonna see what's the current temperature and what is the set point temperature but I'm gonna cover this through just the basic uh, rocker switches like just the basic switches basic switch buttons one will be doing changing the moods uh, sweep, sweeping the moods around in the comfort and protection and the other will from the other rocker I will be sending some fixed temperature value which we want to achieve okay so this is exactly the same drawing but I have changed the switches if you look here KNX1 is 6 rocker slash 12 button push button um, and KNX2 is also 6 rocker 12 button so the first 4 rocker for both of the switches which are used for lighting and LAN it will stay exactly the same but the last 2 rocker of each uh, switch I'm gonna use that for the underfloor heating. Uh, I I'm gonna delete the PIR, which I already done uh, from the program because I want to minimize the number of devices to five. So if I increase one more device, if it's become six, then you need a license to add six devices. So to avoid uh, the license, so I'm gonna keep it to the number of devices to five so on the floor this is the uh, concept uh, I have I didn't include I didn't include the bathroom but if we look we have boiler here the boiler which uh, heat the water and then we have heat link one and then heat link two and i will be having one other heat link as well for the bathroom i missed the bathroom to show here but uh, you will have one other link which will do the bathroom so if you look here heat link uh like if you look into the drawing so you see heat link and heat link uh, this heat link I'm gonna replace this with the manifold so I have a like we will have one boiler and one manifold which will be feeding entry area and the other manifold which will be eating, uh, feeding bedroom to and bathroom this is the manifold so what manifold does is the boiler heat the water and then uh, there will be a pump on the boiler which will pump the water around the pipes and then in the manifolds you can subdivide it uh, those pipes like in the far uh, okay I will explain this uh, in later slide but if you see this uh, manifold heads the white heads so what we do in the KNX, we control them heads to open and close. And at the same time, we turn on and off the pump. So if in case any of the head on the manifold is open, so you want the pump to run, so the water flow in that loop. If all the heads are shut, then you want to turn up the pump. So lighting detail exactly the same, lighting detail, blind detail exactly the same. 
heating zone so that's what I mentioned in the previous slide so I have subdivided the heating into four uh, three different zone so entry is zone one which I, I'm assuming like we have uh, in this in the in this drawing here so we have two zone like in here entry so entry uh, have a separate manifold and then bedroom two and bathroom have uh, one manifold and then obviously there will be one boiler so this is so we have this is how I have subdivided these zones I'm just trying to cover each and every thing up uh, like to cover all the concept up on the floor heating so that's why I subdivided manifold 2 into two zones so I can show you how to create logic for the manifold pump uh, so you can see what's the logic there okay now pumps detail and logic so I assume we have one uh, boiler which will be somewhere let's suppose that's installed in the bathroom the boiler in the bathroom so we have one one pump with the boiler uh, maybe not in bathroom in big houses they have like all the houses they will have a plant room where they install the boilers all the pumps tanks each and everything so let's suppose this is somewhere in a plant room so we have a boiler there and with that boiler you'll definitely have a pump as well so then we have uh, entry manifold So we have entry manifold one pump so we have at the entry we have one manifold and obviously there will be one pump as i showed you in the picture previous picture and then in the bedroom we have a bedroom manifold which will be feeding bathroom and uh, bedroom so they have uh, one pump as well manifold two pump so how the program will be uh, as I divided the manifold 2 into two sub zones which was which is zone 2 and zone 3 so I have created a R gate whether which mean if any of zone 2 or 3 is on then the manifold 2 pump will on, will turn on if both of them the minimal uh, manifold to pump will be off so we need to turn them off and then sub then if we go to the next level if manifold one pump is on then we want a boiler pump on or manifold two pump is on then we want a boiler pump on and if both like if it's a hot day so all three zone will be off zone one zone two zone three will be off so then you don't want the boilers to be running and the boiler pump so you want them to be off as well uh, so I'm using uh, Canix power supply exactly the same uh, six channel dimming actuator uh, switch young switch actuator 16 gain or you can say 16 channel switch or a channel line and I'm using this is a, a different uh, gear switch which is 6 gain 3 plus 3 so there will be 6 rocker and I am using Xenio heating actuator for up to 4 output which mean it can do up to 4 uh, zones okay let's go to the ETS programming okay the same example 
I'm going to start it from tutorial 2. I have done a slight changes. Let's change the name this one to KNX tutorial 3. Uh, Uh, let's suppose we have another cabinet which is for heating cabinet UFH cabinet uh, let's add this uh, let's add the device drag the catalog okay let me minimize this so let's go to Zinio so this is Zinio and so I have heating actuator so this is eight channel and this is four channel so I have ZCL 4 H 230 so we are using 230 volt manifold heads okay so I've added this to the cabinet let's do the Let's do the parameter setting of the actuator first and then we will add the other switches. Go to the parameters. Let's first check the group object. Click here. You don't see anything here because you have to enable each and everything in the parameter first. Go to the parameters. Uh, heating control. So let's go to the heating control here so we have the output output one output two and output three so we have three zones so i'm gonna enable three output and you go here so you can see open and close but uh, you don't have any status there but i need a status as well so let's enable the status i've select all three and show status object now uh, you can see here status object there is enabled as well now let's go let's go to okay so we have four mm, three zones so I need three thermostats for each zone you have you'll need a separate thermostat and i'm using this heating actuator thermostats so if you click on general so you see there is thermostats and if you click on thermostat so it can do up to four thermostat but i need three thermostats so i'm going to use enable first three of these thermostats let's go to the parameter setting so as I have only underfloor heating here so I'm just leaving the setting in the heating I'm not you can do if you want to if you have cooling you are doing it for cooling you can do just cooling if in case you have AC units or heat and cool together what I'm leaving is as it is heating maximum offset and minimum offset uh, I'm not using this uh, in this example but uh, I might create another video uh, for using these maximum offset and minimum offset by default the initial we want it as economy I want it as a comfort uh, basic set point after programming will be 22 I'm happy with that uh, freezing protection set point so this is protection set point six seven which is fine okay let's go to the group object so let's select 
T1 filter T1 so if you see here this is external temp sensor temperature special mode Hedwig mode which is which could which is comfort standby night and protection mode in this case I'm gonna use only comfort and protection mode set point reference so where this is a reference set point where you set the set where you write down your set point like set point mean is at entry let's suppose you want the temperature to be 21 degree so you will have to send 21 degree to the reference set point uh, this is this we will cover in next example current set point what is the current set point status uh, current best set point that is in this example these both will be same but in other examples uh, if we cover like some other example if we use this tip these th these uh, set point step object then they will be different from each other and current set point offset that is uh, at the moment I'm not going into detail of this because it will get very confusing thermostat on and off uh, but I, I don't want this thermostat we uh, I'm gonna disable this object because I'm not turning off the thermostat I want the thermostat to be running all the time and then this is control value uh, I'm using as two point control which will be on and off only so I'm not using as a percentage value let's go back and disable this thermostat uh, on and off state so let's go click on thermostat and thermostat always on no so I'll say yes because I want it to be on all the time okay so we are good here so we did all the settings for the thermostat let's go to go addresses I've create I've, I've changed this structure lighting blinds and it's uh, underfloor heating let's go there first thing is to add so ent entry entry current temperature entry current temperature and then I want entry HVAC mode and then entry HVAC mode status and then I need entry set point or uh, I can you can just write set point but we can write down the reference set point let's write down reference set point reference set point and entry set point status I'll say uh, it is mm, current set point status current Set point 
status. So let's uh, entry current set point status. I'll need uh, add entry zone one on slash off and zone one status. And let's add some spare object, empty group addresses. I'm going to delete the last one. So I'll leave it as nine. Okay, so let's connect these entry current set points. So this we are sending to a thermostat. What is the current set point uh, of the area or of the zone? So the entry current set point, and then special mode connect with the HVAC mode mode status. Reference set point uh, current set point status. Uh, this is this is control variable two point. This is where the thermostat turn on and off the uh, the zone whether it's need to turn on or turn off. That's where it is. Okay, this is done. I have let's do I'm gonna create two copy of this. Uh, sorry, uh, I selected the wrong way around. So you have to select it from top to bottom then it will create the copy exactly from the top to bottom so what I do I select all from top to bottom then control C and then control V and then I press twice and this will create two exactly the same so then I will change this name entry to bedroom 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 and then here is bathroom Okay, so this is then it's bathroom. I have created all three zones, and this is zone zone two. Mm. Zone two. This is zone three. Uh, 
I have created all three zones. Now let's collect, uh, connect the other thermostat as well. So these are all the group addresses in the that one device. So let's go to T2. If I write down, see T2 and T3. If I just write down T2 here, it will filter all the that group addresses. So external temperature, exactly the for the bedroom. Then mode. Then another mode status. Reference set point. Uh, current set point. The and then control value on and on. Yep. And then let's go to do for. Uh, thermostat three. So exactly current temperature. HVAC mode, set point status, uh, current uh, reference set point, and current set point status, and on and up. Okay. Now these are these are the thermostat. It's like it is internal function of the the. In the in the actuator they have thermostat which is it don't need any physical connection at all like there will be no cabling nothing at all just you need uh, to send the temperature to that uh, set point value and more and then it will automatically turn on and turn off that zone so what the physical connection is here if you go down this is actually the physical connection uh, hc1 control value one bit so this will be the physical connection here you will bring here you will connect all the zones so this will be turning on and off the zone the out uh, hc1 control value so zone one is entry zone one and then that's the status open and close now let's do the next one is entry zone two and status then status and, and entry three then status okay so this is here this is all done now we have created thermostat and we have link the output of the actuator to that thermostat as well so if you look if you look into this two point control uh, two point control thermostat three two point control will turn will open and close the wall number three uh, hc3 which is bathroom so that will open when it's required uh, bathroom wall and close when it's required bathroom wall now this will what I've done here this will by the time being it will not work because even if you write down the reference set point or H mod the thermostat will be confused what's the current temperature so we need to send uh, the current temperature to the thermostat because the thermostat don't know whether it's hot cool at the moment so how we're gonna do that we need to uh, send we need to add these switches to the entry and to the bedroom so we can send the temperature value to uh, this uh, to the thermostats let's go back to the catalog catalog uh, I'm going to so what is there so this is 5.36 
5136 so let's add this to the entry and then add it to the bedroom as well I try to add something in the bathroom let's try oh, I have I have license so I should be able to do it you might not you will not be able to do this uh, let me remove the license and let's try cannot add one device with okay so I have five devices let's try to add this device into bathroom cannot add one device with the license install license so you will not be able to add any further devices so let's Okay, now let's go back to group addresses. Lighting, so entry lighting, exactly the same. So at the entry, I'll go to the push button setting. So we have rocker. Let's see okay room temperature enable first thing is room temperature measurement i want to enable this that's first thing is enable so it will give you the what's the temperature at that point this one is dimming impression concept so this is button function and this is also button function so this three four fives are dimming and six is switching I'm not changing that rocker four is blind and this one is I will come back to that in a minute yes do rocker one a light on and dimming is all light dimming and then go back to button three <coughs> and region layer button four entry spotlight exactly the same thing and wall light and then spotlight and then let's go to the blinds entry blinds short oppression short oppression long oppression long oppression okay now let's do let's do the setting for the hatchback entry so at the entry current temperature so I need to send uh, current temperature to the thermostat so what is the current temperature at the entry so which is this switch which we which is installed at the entry so when we enable we enable this here go to a journal uh, room temperature measurement enable so I need to link this one and to here so it will send the temperature value to the uh, uh, to that zone so what's the current temperature to that zone now rocker 5 I want to I want to do like change set point temperature through rocker 5 and 6 is set point mode let's go to the parameter so if you click on rocker 5 what I want to do is 2 by 
transmission. So I'm transmitting temperature. So let's write down this one 21. Uh, this will be 23. So if when you press left rocker, it will send the set point to 21 degree and right it will set the set point to 23 degrees and then the next one is rocker 6 I want to control the moods from here so 1 by 12 value transmission so this will be one for comfort mode and four for uh, protection mode so you have to select here uh, left rocker and right rocker so percentage uh, one byte value transmission Mm, left is comfort and right is protection now let's link this one here the temperature to the entry reference set point and mode to here so what it will what will this do is this will so if you want to turn up the heating so you press the uh, the right button and it will go to protection mode and if you want to turn on the heating uh, you press the left button and it will go back to comfort mode <coughs> and then if you want to change the set point to 23 degree then you press the right button and 21 degree you press the left button and it will change the set point uh, this is just a basic example I just want to try to explain the concept of the underfloor heating uh, you definitely you will need in a in a project like for someone house or whatever you are doing in uh, practical life you will have some sort of visual visualization or RTC with display so you will have to do it through a different way so this is uh, this area this section is done here now let's go to the bedroom I have added a push button here as well I'm gonna do I'm gonna do another trick let's delete this one I'll show you another thing is so we have exactly the same setting in here on the other and the bedroom switch as well so I'm gonna just control copy this one and paste in bedroom and if you look here if you go to the parameter of this so it's exactly the same so you don't need to change the parameters again so this is for the bedroom let's do the the artist uh, underflow first and then go to the lighting and then five temperature value reference set point and six is it's wake mode now let's go to the lighting <coughs> let's go to the bedroom lighting
at that <coughs> that uh, bedside light to the all on off as well. I had missed this one. Rocket 3D min and let's go let's do button three button three button four spotlight button five wall light this one is for bedside lamp and now let's go to the plants bedroom blinds both together long oppression and short oppression okay so we have done the RTC uh, we have created three thermostats and uh, we have i haven't i haven't done the bathroom but it is exactly the same uh, we will need you will need another device which is my temperature let's have a look it might be let's see if we can read uh it says okay so we don't have we can't get any inputs through this device <coughs> you will need another switch or a PIR in the bathroom which which uh, will measure the temperature and send it to the bathroom and then you will need to link it here but as I'm limited to five devices so I can't do that right now so let's assume we have already have something in here which is sending the temperature to the bathroom now we need to cover up the logic because we this thermostat is turning on and off the this is turning on and off thermostat uh, the zone walls but for the pumps we need to create a logic now for the pumps so let's first link those pump to uh, our switch actuator so we have let's go to the switch actuator young switch actuator let's go to the group objects so 11 12 okay let's first let's create the group addresses so under floor let's add another middle group pumps pumps let's create uh, so we had let me let's do let's copy these addresses here and the pumps so we have three pumps let's let's create quickly all addresses so we can okay so so I had three pumps and again so the first one is Manifold one pump 
on off and then on off status yep and manifold to pump and then then and boil a pump so manifold one uh, let's do let's change the setting here so let's suppose we we are linking these uh, pumps to the our switch actuator channel 11 12 and 13 so let's go to the parameter select shutters so let's change them to switch channel uh, 12 11 12 so there is is there something already link can't be can't be was it 12 yeah 12 nothing or not 12 so we need to link with 13 and 13 14 15 16 so let's go to the Thirteen, and change it to the switch, switching. So let's link them to thirteen. Or we need to enable the feedback as well. We don't really need. We are uh, in this case. We don't really need the feedback, but uh, it's it's good to enable the feedback because uh, if it's a visualization. If you have any sort of visualization so you should you will be able to see what's the current status of the pump whether they are on off so it's uh, it's always good to link the feedback so switch and switch so that is manifold one pump uh, uh, yeah we we do need to enable the feedback because we're gonna use this feedback in the programming logic now and pump to feedback yeah 15 man pump and feedback here okay so we create the links uh, <coughs> for the manifold one we if you look into the uh, let's go back to that drawing uh, that diagram logic diagram so manifold one so we have only one zone at manifold one so when that zone is on we want the pump to be on and when that zone is off so we want the pump to be off so no need for any logic in there any R get in there so we straight we go to the uh, underfloor and this is here we switch in on the zone <coughs> and switching off the zones uh, let's link that one so we need to link this switching object to the zone one on and off So that's all we don't need any logic in that case but in here if you look in here uh, to the manifold 2 so we have zone 2 and zone 3 together so there could be possibility bedroom is on and bathroom is off or bedroom is off and bathroom is on so you have to create logic in here so what i need to go 
uh, so let's go to this Xenio device that's why because Xenio device enable you to create logic in there so that's why I picked this Xenio heating actuator so if you go to a journal so you can enable logic function so let's go to the logic function so for this manifold manifold 2 I need two input and want them to be or get yeah so it says two and function one I'll close this here for the time being so you go to the function so input one trigger and input two trigger and then and this <coughs> this trigger mean like you select the input one and input two so if any of the input change it will uh, it will operate it will do the operation so let's I'm gonna write the uh, manifold to pump logic so operation input uh, so input one id or get and want it to be in and input two and the output is b1 so you click here and the result it's also transmitting b1 so let's go to the uh, so we have data entry one data entry two and then the result so let's go back to group addresses and we go to the heating underfloor heating so the status of zone 2 status so I have to link this in here and zone 3 status so when there's any of them both is on zone 2 or zone 3 is on I want to turn on the pump manifold 2 pump yeah so I have linked this to the output so this will turn on the manifold 1 pump uh, manifold 2 pump now and the main boiler pump what I need to do because for the if manifold 1 pump or manifold 2 pump any of any of them is on so I want the main boiler pump to be on to run as well so for this purpose I'll need to create another logic which let's do that as well so let's I'm going to do it exactly on the same device so this two was for the manifold logic and I'm going to add another two for the main boiler pump so this will become four four inputs and I'm going to enable another function so this function is the trigger will be 3 and 4 and then operation so this is man this I will write boiler boiler pump logic uh, let's do this one here select data entry 3 or get and data entry 4 what I think is very important if you look here the output is uh, let's close this one the out the result is going to be one you can't have b1 and two different function if you look into the function for the manifold one so that is b1 as well and this operation this must this should must be different than 
B1. So I'll change it to the result to B2. And also you need to change it to the result as well here. So you see the result value is B1. So I need to change this to B2 as well. Okay, so let's go again to group addresses. So we have data entry 3. You extend this and data entry uh, 4 and then a result of function 2 which will be the pump so let's go let's let's go to group addresses and pumps so straight away the status you need to link with the status because you can turn them on the switches any from anywhere but this will it will always send a status here which will make sure that the pump is coming on and off so you get the uh, right state of the pumps so manifold one pump manifold two pump and then the output will trigger main boiler pump so this is the logic we create uh, all the underfloor heating whether it's one zone, uh, whether it's three zone, whether it's 20 zone, or whether it's 30 zone, whatever the zones are, they have the exact same concept. You will have one boiler, main boiler, then you will have different manifolds. You will have to create a logic for turning on the manifold pumps. Then you will have a create logic for turning on the main boiler pump. They will have hot water and all other stuff as well which you will need to change your logic according to that so i think so that's uh, that's all for the underfloor heating So we create the logic. Thanks for watching. And if you got any question, just let me know. Uh, if you want me to make a video on a specific product, just write a comment and I'll try to do, do that as well. Thanks for watching.